Luis Ortiz wins a 10-round unanimous decision over Christian Hammer in a pretty entertaining heavyweight affair. Now, going into the fight, the uh, Wilder fans, I would say, were making Luis Ortiz out to be the third best heavyweight in the world, the fourth best heavyweight in the world. They were making him out to be this uh, avoided fighter who Anthony Joshua is petrified of and pretty much all the other heavyweights are petrified of, Dylan White, etc. And given that fact, most people were expecting Luis Ortiz to come in and blow Christian Hammer out because if he's as good as the Wilder fans say he is, then that's what he should be doing, right? But unfortunately for them, that's not what happened. But here's my take on it. I do think that the Wilder fans go overboard in terms of how highly they rate Luis Ortiz. They do go overboard because if you look at Ortiz's resume in terms of his wins, who is there? There's literally nobody in terms of his wins. He had a win over Brian Jennings years ago. And how good is Brian Jennings, by the way? He just lost to Oscar Rivas. Okay? Brian Jennings is no great shakes as a fighter. He's a decent heavyweight. Nothing special. Luis Ortiz beat him. An ancient Tony Thompson. I mean, Malik Scott. Pfft, Dave Allen. And then he lost to Wilder. So, look, we don't really know how good Luis Ortiz is. That's the truth. Because he hasn't fought anybody outside of Wilder in... The heavyweight top five, top 10, you would say right now. We don't know how good he is. So it is over the top and overboard for the Deontay Wilder fans to be making out as though Luis Ortiz is the second or third or fourth best heavyweight out there. It's over the top. But at the same time, I think that a lot of the Wilder critics are going over the top with their criticism of Ortiz's performance against Hammer. Truth be told, um, I felt like Christian Hammer actually came to fight. This wasn't like the Povetkin fight where Christian Hammer just turned up to survive. He came to fight and he boxed a pretty clever fight, to be honest with you. He wasn't at all scared of Luis Ortiz. And I wonder why there was no fear factor there, because there was a lot of fear factor when he fought Povetkin, but there was seemingly no fear factor at all when he fought Ortiz. This might be, uh, it might be confidence that he got from the Povetkin fight, the fact that he went the distance, or it might be based upon amateur reputation, or maybe it's a bit of both, because Christian Hammer was a very experienced amateur. He was a decent level international when he fought in the amateur ranks. I think he had like over 100 fights. So being from Eastern Europe, I believe he's from Romania, he would have heard of people like, I'm sure he would have known of Povetkin, although Povetkin's quite a bit older than Christian Hammer, so they might not have been on the amateur scene around the same time or Luis Ortiz. But be that as it may, the in Eastern Europe, particularly of Povetkin's generation, amateur boxers were extremely highly revered in Eastern Europe. Okay, it's not like in the UK where people don't really focus that much on amateur boxers. You know, uh, you know, other than when AJ won his Olympic gold, or maybe James DeGale a little bit, in terms of the ABAs, you know, the, the, the national titles, the regional titles, all that kind of stuff, um, people don't really focus on that so much in the UK as much as they did in Eastern Europe back in the days. Because, of course, before the fall of communism, there was no professional boxing in Eastern Europe. It was only amateur boxing. So their amateur boxers were really stars in those Eastern European countries. The same goes for Cuba, where Luis Ortiz is from. People like Teofilo Stevenson, um, Felix Savon, etc. These people were massive stars in Cuba. Now, when I say stars, I mean they were famous in Cuba. Doesn't necessarily they were live, mean they were living a star lifestyle, okay? Because Cuba is obviously a communist country, not a capitalist country. Uh, but be that as it may, they were very, very well known in Cuba and looked up to. So the point I'm making is, I'm going to assume that Hammer probably knew something about Luis Ortiz as an amateur. 
Yeah, I'm assuming he would have heard of his reputation. He would have known or heard of people or spoken to people who boxed Ortiz and known something about him on the amateur circuit. Because again, the former Soviet countries were very close to Cuba because they were obviously, you know, the the communist link there. They were very close. And there was a lot of um, collaboration between the two, you know, between Cuba and the Soviet Union. There was a lot of collaboration in terms of the sporting world. The Russian coaches used to train a lot of the Cuban fighters. A lot of people don't realize this. So there was a lot of, you know, cross-pollination or whatever you want to call it between the two um, cultures. So I think that Hammer probably heard of Ortiz's reputation in the amateurs, um, even though, you know, Hammer and Ortiz's amateur careers were probably not running concurrently. But I think he probably heard of him and wasn't that impressed. You know, because Ortiz wasn't one of the best Cubans. I'm sure that Hammer would have been far more respectful of people like uh, Ordinaire Solis. I'm sure when he heard Solis's name, he thought, okay, that's someone I've heard of. That's a serious hombre. Uh, and of course, you know, the likes of Felix Savon, etc. And also Povetkin. I'm sure uh, Christian Hammer had a massive amount of respect for Povetkin because of the reputation that Povetkin had coming out of the Eastern European amateur scene, you know? I'm sure you would have had a tremendous respect for him. So I suspect that that had a part to play in Christian Hammer's approach to the Luis Ortiz fight, because going into the fight, again, he didn't really seem that bothered about Ortiz. He wasn't looking at him like this guy's a killer or anything like that. He didn't seem that bothered. So I think that the amateur situation might have played a part in it and also the fact that Ortiz is old also the fact that Ortiz went the distance with Travis Kaufman so I'm not saying it's any one thing I think it was a combination of different things um, but I do think that people don't realize how big amateur boxing uh, was maybe still is and how highly respected the top amateurs are in a lot of Eastern European countries they're far more highly respected and revered than Amateurs are in the UK, in my view. So I think that might have played a part in Hammer's approach. And Hammer's approach was a gung-ho approach. I mean, he came out in the first round aggressive, attacking Luis Ortiz, looking to hit him with big, bright hands. And Ortiz responded by hitting Hammer in the body with some nice left hands, which slowed Hammer right up, uh, took a lot of his energy away. But Hammer was still very game right up until the last bell. So for the whole fight, Christian Hammer was basically trying to knock Luis Ortiz out. He was throwing home run right hands. <laughs> Most of them were blocked or missed, but occasionally some did get through. I remember one of the rounds where Luis Ortiz got his nose badly bloodied. I think that was actually from a left hook though, rather than a right hand. Maybe, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Got his nose badly bloodied by Hammer. And there was also an incident in the, I think it was the second round, where Luis Ortiz's glove touched the canvas. Now, at the time, straight after round two, there was an instant replay, but it didn't show whether a punch had landed or not. A couple rounds later, they showed an instant replay. And what had actually happened was Christian Hammer had unintentionally headbutted Luis Ortiz as he was coming inside to you know, try and unload punches. His head had kind of hit Luis Ortiz in the jaw. And that had actually buckled Luis Ortiz's knee. So he was, you know, going down at that point. And as he was going down, or he was at least, let me not say going down, but he, he his knees had buckled and he was kind of bending his knees at that point. Then Christian Hammer came with a left hook that kind of caught Luis Ortiz around the back of the head. And Ortiz went down, his glove touched the canvas. So that really was not a knockdown. So I think it was the right call by the ref because the punch hit him around the back of the head. You know, if you're hitting somebody by the, around the back of the head, that's not supposed to be a knockdown even if they go down. So, yeah, I think it was the right call. Uh, but did the ref even see Luis Ortiz's glove hit the canvas? That's the thing. Maybe it was a right call because the referee didn't see it rather than him making the right call because he saw the punch and saw it was on the back of his head. You know what I mean. Um, but yeah, like I say, it was a entertaining fight. There were no knockdowns. Nobody was seriously hurt to the head. Christian Hammer was hurt several times to the body, but he was able to take Luis Ortiz's headshots very, very well. At no point did 
I remember Luis, uh, sorry, uh, Christian Hammer staggering or being on wobbly legs or anything like that. A couple of times he pretended to be on wobbly legs. You know, he was kind of clowning Luis Ortiz and stuff like that. But at no point did he look out of it. Did, at no point to me did he look like he was on the verge of being stopped. And so some people are going to question Luis Ortiz's power because he landed flush on Christian Hammer many times. Loads of flush left hands, uh, left uppercuts, the occasional right hook, a lot of jabs. Uh, yeah, people are going to question his power. But again, I think people may be a little harsh because Christian Hammer is a vet. He did have an extensive amateur background. He has had a lot of experience. And look, he will have learned from the experiences that he's had. He was stopped by Marius Wack early on in his career. He was stopped by Tyson Fury early on in his career. Uh, but maybe he learned from those experiences in terms of how to survive. Because I remember the Tyson Fury fight, Christian Hammer was just coming forward, coming forward, coming forward. That's all he was doing. He wasn't trying to switch it up. He wasn't really trying to survive. He was just coming forward at Tyson Fury, walking into Fury's punches. And from what I remember of the Marius Wack fight, it was a similar kind of situation. Although I don't remember that fight as vividly as the Fury fight. I remember the Fury fight much more vividly. And that's all he was doing, just walking forward, walking forward. And Fury just ground him down and took him out. Whereas against Luis Ortiz, Christian Hammer was on the back foot. He was being sneaky. He was coming off the ropes with big right hands. Occasionally he would come forward, but other times he would be on the... Do you understand? So I think Christian Hammer boxed a much more savvy and cagey veteran type fight against Luis Ortiz than he did against uh, Tyson Fury. You know, that's what I, I have to say about that. And when you get to his age and when you've re you're as experienced as Christian Hammer is, and it's not just the professional fights he's had and the amateur fights, he must have worked as a sparring partner for a lot of the top heavyweights. That's what I'm going to assume. That Christian Hammer has sparred a hell of a lot of top heavyweights. And you pick up experience doing that. You, you learn how to survive. So I don't personally want to totally trash Luis Ortiz's performance. I don't think it was that bad. I think he was in there against the wily vet who's learned from his previous experiences and who was slinging some heavy lever. You know, that right hand that he was slinging over the top, he, he's like, what, a 250, 260 pound man? You don't want to get hit in the mouth by a 260 pound man when he's throwing home run shots like that. I don't care what his reputation is or whether you think he's a big puncher or not. Any 250 pound man who's throwing them big arcing overhand rights and putting all his body weight into it, you don't want to get hit in the mouth by that guy. <laughs> so Luis Ortiz had to be careful to some extent and, uh, you know, just take his time. Now, is Luis Ortiz slowing down? Is he the fighter that he was several years ago? Of course he's not. Of course he's slowing down. Um, but even Luis Ortiz at his best was relatively unproven. We don't know what Luis Ortiz at his best would do against an Anthony Joshua or a Tyson Fury, etc. Um, we saw him last year. Was it last year? Was it 2017, 2018? I forget now. I think it was 2017, wasn't it? Or was it 2018? Time flies. When he fought Deontay Wilder anyway. <laughs> Let me check here. Oh, 2018. Okay. So we saw last year how he got in against Wilder, but even against Wilder, you can't say that was the best Luis Ortiz has ever been. So, you know, he's really an enigma, Luis Ortiz. We, we, we'll, we'll never know how good he could have been. Uh, but in terms of how good he is now, him versus Dylan White is a competitive fight. Him versus Jarrell Miller, and I know a lot of people are going to give me flack for this, and I might have said this before, I might actually edge Jarrell Miller against Luis Ortiz. Yeah, I might actually favor Jarrell Miller because... Miller is just a massive guy. He's not going to struggle to push Luis Ortiz back. Luis Ortiz, what does he weigh? 2 240? 238? What did he weigh against Hammer? 238. He's not one of the biggest heavyweights out there, Luis Ortiz. He might be, he's built a 6'4, I reckon 6'3. 6'3, 238. Going in there against the guy, Miller, 6'4, 320 pounds. I probably edge Miller. At this juncture, right now, I would be I'd pick Miller to be um Luis Ortiz. And Luis Ortiz versus Dylan White. I think a couple years ago, I would have picked Ortiz. Maybe even a year ago, I might have picked Ortiz. Right now, has he slowed down enough 
to make me pick Dylan White over Ortiz. Maybe, maybe. I still think it's a tough fight for Dylan White. Don't get it twisted. I still think that is a tough fight, a fight that he could lose, but it's also a fight he could win, you know? I don't see that as a walkover for either man, put it that way. So yeah, I don't want to go overboard in my criticism of Ortiz, but at the same time, yes, the Deontay Wilder fans have been going overboard when it comes to their praise of the man. Because <laughs> the more they praise him, obviously the better they try and make Deontay Wilder's resume look. Because he's supposedly got this win over this killer, right? Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Ortiz's performance. Um, where do you think he goes from here? Do you think he should be getting the Dylan White fight now that Dominic Brazil looks to have got the Deontay Wilder fight? Uh, would you like to see him against, I don't know, Povetkin? Because there's rumors that Povetkin versus Usek might have, might have fallen out. So yeah, just let me know what you think. Drop it all in the comment section below. It's that man, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.